You've just landed your first cruise ship contract, you're ready to go and travel the world, but what do you need to do to be absolutely ready for this contract? Keep watching the video to find out more. Hi everyone, my name is Hayley Mabry and I have spent the last two years of my life performing and working on cruise ships. So in that time I've done two cruise ship contracts, I am currently getting ready for my third. So I have plenty of experience in getting ready for these contracts, figuring out sometimes too late what I need to do or what I don't need to do, what I need to pack, all that kind of stuff. Some of these things on this list are specific to performers, so people in the cast or musicians that are on the ship, but the majority of them are valid for any cruise ship crew. Number one, when you first get your contract, you do just get a lot of paperwork. Honestly, it takes me about an hour to two hours to read through all of them. So just designate a decent amount of time and read through all of them because there's gonna be a lot of really important information in them. Once you've read through all of them, make sure you sign and upload or send back to the company everything that needs to be signed and sent back because they will be chasing you for that. And some companies will actually not give you the job anymore if you don't send these things back. So make sure you're really on top of that. Number two, visas. So for my contracts, because I spend a bit of time in Miami for rehearsals before I join the ship, and then once you're on the ship, my ships have always gone in and out of US ports, at least for some of the contract. So for that, I need two different visas. I need a C1 slash D visa and a B1 slash B2 visa. One of them is for all crew members going in and out of the US, and one of them is for rehearsing. So staying in the US for a little while. Not sure which one is which, but they're the visas that you need. The next one is your medical. So I would advise getting onto this as soon as you possibly can because I have so many friends and myself that have had trouble with the medical and it's taken longer than you expect it to. So make sure you go and see a doctor and get that done ASAP in case there's any blood tests you need redone or I don't know anything like that that you need to fix before the contract starts. So get that done ASAP. For the medical that I'm trying to get done at the moment for my next contract, I saw the doctor last week. And because I had a cold, my white blood cells were higher than they should be. So I have to wait until I'm better. You can hear like I'm still a bit congested. I have to wait until I'm better and then get another blood test done again before that I can be all clear. So don't be sick when you get your medical done, if you can. <laughs> My next tip would be minimalize, minimalize, minimalize. That was kind of fun to say. When you're on the ship, you do not have much space. Also, getting to the ship, you have to fit everything you want with you into your suitcase or two suitcases or, I mean, I have two suitcases and a carry-on because I have a lot of stuff. Make sure you cut it down as much as you can if you need to throw away soap and moisturizer and just buy it when you're actually on the ship or in rehearsals in Miami, depending on what your situation is, do that. You need to be underweight, otherwise you'll be paying a lot of money. My next bit of advice is kind of obvious, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you'll think about it, but just make sure you allow time to do this. Make time for your friends and family. Make time to see them before you go because you're gonna be away for a while and you're gonna miss them. Make sure you cancel any subscriptions that you're not going to need while you're away. So if you have a gym membership that you're paying money for, you're not gonna be able to go to that gym when you're on the ship. Also, there's a gym there, generally. So cancel that. Also, if you can pause your private health payments, say for the um, amount of time that you're away, that's a really good way to save money as well. Basically, you wanna be not outputting any money that is going into services that you're not using. Make sure you check if your phone plan works overseas or if you can pay a little bit extra to have roaming. And then also check, before you even do that, check the itinerary of your ship. So if you Google the name of your ship and the word itinerary, a bunch of different websites will come up. iCruise is one of them. I think there's one called Igloo. I don't know, have a look. And you'll be able to look at all the different ports that you go to. So check if your phone works in those countries because my oh my, you'll be appreciative of that. Not necessarily your phone working, because that probably won't work in a different country, but your data. Data is gonna save your life when you're on a cruise ship because Wi-Fi is expensive on board. If your phone plan doesn't work in these countries, I would highly recommend looking into getting a different SIM card when you're over wherever you're going. So if you're based out of the US a lot, getting a US SIM card, just because internet is the most vital way for you to communicate with your friends and family and to stay in the loop. Make sure you get any medication or eyewear glasses, so contacts that you'll need for the entire contract because sometimes in different countries you can't quite get the exact medication that you want and you don't want to be stuck in the middle of the ocean in a foreign country where they don't speak English in desperate need of this medication or the ability to see. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just make sure you bring all that with you and have it in your suitcase packed for the entire length of the contract and maybe even like a month or two extra just in case. 
Also, if there's things that you need in your life, um, I don't know what other examples there are out there, but for me personally, I really like using a Betadine throat gargle, but it's really, really hard to get in America. Like you've got to go to a doctor and get a script. In Australia where I'm from, you don't need a script. You just go to the pharmacy and get it. I haven't actually bought any in England, which is where I am right now. So I'm not sure if I can get it. So I'll have to find that out before I go, but I always try and stock up on a bunch of them. I go. Also Barocca. I love Barocca. I know it's not very good for you, but I love it. So I always bring some with me as well. Next one is that the company will generally ask you to get a background check done. John? John. Before you go and pay whatever money it is that you need to pay the different governments that you're getting it from, just check that the company that you're working with isn't gonna pay for it for you and organize it for you. With this company I'm about to start working with, I went and paid the money, I think it was 25 pounds to get like my English one. And I was getting ready to pay Australia to get my Australian one as well, cause I've lived in two different countries now. And then I got an email saying basically that they were sorting it for me. So I just lost that money, so woo. So check that and don't pay the money <laughs> until you know. Make sure you have converters for your plugs. Um, so for example, on my last two ships, I know that on board they had a US and a European plug in my bedroom. And then when I'm rehearsing in Miami, there's only an American plug in the wall. So obviously I'm not from Europe or America. So I <laughs> you, I've got to have converters. Oh, this is important. So if you're going straight onto the ship, you're not going to rehearsals on land or anything, just going straight to the ship, they will give you a, money card that all your earnings will go straight onto so you'll have money and it works the one i have works in literally every single country but you won't be paid on your first day generally in my experience you get paid two weeks after you've come on board so those two first two weeks you won't have any money so either make sure you've got a card that can work in these other countries or that you just bring cash because you need money. If you're going to rehearsals on land for a while like I do, you're gonna have even more time where you're not being paid. I would definitely advise bringing a travel card or a credit card that works overseas, or just lots and lots and lots of cash. But yeah, have a way of having money. This isn't the most important thing in the world, but for me and for singers, I think it is very, very, very important. On the ship, the air is really, really dry because it's just air conditioned everywhere. My voice gets really, really dry. Your skin can get really dry. Your eyes can get really dry. This, these are things that affect everyone, no matter what your job. Um, so I always have a humidifier. Also eye drops. As a contact lens wearer, just as a human being, being in air conditioning makes your eyes really, really dry and quite sore. So eye drops, I find are really, really helpful as well. So I get a lot of questions about what clothes to bring on your cruise ship contract. And I like to think about it like you've, you've literally got different wardrobes basically if you're not a cast member if you're not in rehearsals i like to think of it as two wardrobes you've got one wardrobe that is your guest appropriate wardrobe so when you're in guest areas you need to be dressed a certain way you need to be dressed slightly more professionally they will generally have formal nights on your ship where you've got to wear like an evening gown or a cocktail style dress or a suit for the guys. During the day, you can be a bit more casual, but still nice. On my last two ships, like, you weren't allowed to wear shorts. Guys, it had to be long pants. Ladies, it had to be long trousers as well, or a skirt or a dress. Smart casual is kind of the general theme for that. At nighttime, you would dress up a little bit. Girls have to wear heels after six, I think, was the rule on my last two ships. Then on the formal nights, another step up again. So make sure you've got enough clothes for all of that. And then your second wardrobe is your chill clothes when you're in your room, when you're in crew areas, when you're in the crew bar, and when you're off the ship. So you want guest appropriate clothes and everything else, basically. For cast members, I like to think of it as a third wardrobe as well, because you're in rehearsals six days a week for around two months generally, you need a lot of active wear. So for cast members, three wardrobes. Active wear, rehearsal wear, uh, guest appropriate, and everything else. And then this last thing is just for the performers, really. I mean, actually it would, it would apply for other people as well. The workload, especially in rehearsals, is very intense. You're working oh, massive days, six days a week, like I said before, it's just a lot of work. So I like to get, people say show fit, but I like to get rehearsal fit because I find you work more in rehearsals than when you're actually on board the ship. I would like to sing for a couple of hours every day just to get my voice really equipped for dealing with that amount of vocal load. I would like to be working out, doing lots of dance classes, all that kind of stuff. Same for if you're working in any other department on the ship as well. You're going to be working long hours when you're on the ship, so do whatever you need to do to prepare yourself 
for doing your thing. And that's about it really. Um, and then, I mean, just go and enjoy yourself. Make sure you bring a camera or you've got a good camera on your phone. Make sure you bring your, um, I was gonna say togs, that's an Aussie word. Bring your swimmers, your bathers, your bikini, your, your, mm, swimming outfit, the clothes that you go swimming in. I always struggle to find a word other than togs. Any Aussies out there that know what togs are, give me a thumbs up in the comments, please. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, go and live your absolute best life. You're about to have the adventure of a lifetime. If you think of any other things you need to do to get ready for a contract, leave them in a the comment below. Help each other out. Help me out, because I struggle. I mean, I'm, I forget things. I have this big list and then I tick them off as I go. But then as I tick one off, I had two other things I'd forgotten about before. So it's a really big job getting ready for these contracts. But it is so worth it. You're going to have such a good time. Um, yeah. So that being said, I am about to go on another contract. Um, there'll be plenty more cruise ship content coming your way. So if you're interested in that, click subscribe, click like, click the little bell thingy that gives you notification, click as many things as you want, go click crazy. And you can come along for the journey with me and we can swap stories and talk about what we're doing on cruise ships. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. So, bye. Brain. Gosh, my voice is so tired. I wish this sickness would leave me so I could get my blood test done.